Barca facing Juventus was supposed to be the big news of the week, but we knew that the Mosin de Sanchora had already collected enough signatures and we knew that a referendum was supposed to be called, but as kool our job is to watch the matches and wait for news updates about everything else. Well, on the verge of the biggest Champions League match of the season so far, Cristiano Ronaldo having COVID and not featuring in the game wasn't the biggest news. Instead, it was the resignation of FC Barcelona club president Josep Bartomeu and his board. So today, well, at least after you've checked out our preview for that match against Juve, we're going to talk about what's next for Football Club Barcelona. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube exclusive. Okay, let's try to process this news a bit. Josep Bartomeu, after all this time of hashtag Bartomeu out and everything else, all those other campaigns, he and his board are finally resigning. If you need a reminder of how we got here, Jordi Ferrer and the Motion de Censura group were able to collect more than the 20,000 signatures of the 16,000 plus signatures required to have the vote of no confidence against Bartomeu and therefore bring about a referendum to force the board to resign. Now it would be easier if they could vote electronically, but that not being the case, the board also offered only one polling location at the Camp Nou, which the Catalan government did deem to be unsafe. Then the Catalan government also responded to that final letter to the board saying that it was safe enough for people to be voting in person but that the club needed to offer multiple polling locations. So with COVID cases again on the rise in Spain and facing a referendum, Bartomeu and company decided to resign on their own accord, citing the health and safety of the members who would need to vote in person. So there, you can't say he didn't ever do anything nice. Before we talk about what comes next, I want to briefly reflect on Bartomeu's legacy. Honestly, it was doomed from the beginning, as Bartomeu took over when Sandra Rosell resigned due to the fallout of the shady business involved with the Neymar deal. Somehow Bartomeu was allowed to be his own man, and fortunately for him, he signed Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, Luis Suarez, and even Rakitic in his first year in charge, and the team won the treble in 2015. But we all know it's been downhill ever since, and things got much worse when Neymar left, exposing something we all knew. This was a businessman who didn't truly understand the business of football, and certainly never understood the part that football played in the football part of the club. On the field, the appointments of Ernesto Valverde and Kike Setien were handled not only poorly, but you wondered the restraints that were put on these men by those behind the curtains. Even if they were allowed to do what they wanted, they still proved to be the wrong men for those moments, especially Valverde, who was somehow let go too late and too early due to being let go mid-season, months after he should have been originally let go after Liverpool. Bartomeu made big decisions that has certainly helped the club, growing the brand and making profits in China, India, the US, and all around the world. That helped set Barca up for the future. But all that progress could be negated by the bad decisions made. The social media scandal is on a different planet, but the Goldman Sachs loan, relationship with the players, and signing players for more than 100 million euros with absolutely no plan in mind will cancel out any good this board did, and definitely puts him in the pantheon with Marty Corretta, the Barca president that fumbled the Di Stefano signing, Enrique Pinheiro back in the early 40s, and Juan Gaspar as one of the worst presidents that the club has ever had. You know the list, and I know I don't need to convince anybody watching this, but Bartomeu had a few things go wrong in his presidency, just to put it lightly. The worst part is, is that his legacy isn't written yet. We'll have to see the mess that the new board inherits on day one. On top of that, he did slip in in that final press conference that the club has agreed to join a European Super League pending voting yes by the members. I'm not going to harp too much on this idea now because we're going to have plenty of time in the future to talk about it, but I don't really like the idea of a European Super League, even if Barcelona are in it, so I'll leave it there for now. So what's next? It is a little complicated, but we do know the basics. Per Article 35.4 of the Statutes of the Club, a managing committee now replaces the Board of Directors. The Economic Commission President, Carlos Tusquets, who, fun fact, was only 27 years old when Josep Luis Nunez named him treasurer of the club, a position he held when the team signed Diego Maradona, will be leading this management committee. This committee is made up of members of the Economic and Disciplinary Committees, both organizations that are already involved in the club, and this committee must be the minimum of seven members. They then have three months, so basically until the end of January, to call for an election, but this could happen sooner. And what this means is that instead of having elections in March, where the transition of power would have ended in July, 
This new board could take into effect and take charge at the beginning of February at the latest. Now, who will be the next president of FC Barcelona is something that everyone will obviously be talking about, including Frances and I on this week's pod. The big name pre-candidates already consist of Victor Font, Juan Laporta, Agusti Benedito, Emma Rosar, and Jordi Ferre, and a few others. Any pre-candidates hoping to become full candidates will have to collect 2,278 signatures in 23 days to get on the ballot. Again, we'll be discussing the candidates in more detail as the race heats up, but the one candidate that has already laid out a pretty substantial plan, Victor Font, has already spoken about quite a few ideas that he has cooking. His biggest competition will certainly be Laporta, who has nostalgia and promises as his two primary selling points. So what will this mean for the immediate future, like the January transfer window? Well, it would be in the best interest of the club to have the elections as soon and as safely as possible, but the transfer window may just be a dud. Between COVID cases rising and the club's finances being a mess, don't expect any January transfers, though I guarantee the Memphis Depay storyline is not going to be over anytime soon. I also don't think this changes anything that could be happening in the near future with Eric Garcia, whether he is bought for some low price in January or he comes on a free in the summer. And what of Coleman? That's another one of those let's wait and see or at least see if it comes up on the podcast this week. But the names Victor Font and Xavi are part of that conversation, little spoiler. So to be honest, I did my best to read the statutes, but I did have some help with some legal minds and those on the internet, of course, to figure out what comes next. But the majority of us do understand what's coming in the immediate future. As someone who creates content, hope is a terrific tool. But you better believe that patience is going to be the first thing that a new board is going to have to sell to all the members, because FC Barcelona is in quite the mess right now. Messi could still leave, new signings will probably be put on hold for a while, and results won't just appear. But, and this is the big but, I do have the faith that this begins the next chapter in the club's history. One that will be quite uncertain, but ultimately one that will lead to the club being something we can be proud of again. And on that journey, make sure you keep checking this channel for more match reviews and content like this, and check out our podcast wherever you listen. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.